Lawrence Scott, Warriors TV with Don Nelson. He's heading into the Hall of Fame and dropping by the Warriors facility here to have a big event as we head to Springfield, Massachusetts. And you kind of take a little time here to see what's going on with this organization. You look at this past offseason. What are your impressions of where this team is headed? I'm impressed. Uh, they're so nice to do this for me, but uh, I'm also impressed on what they're doing on the court. Uh, I, I think they're one of the up-and-coming teams. I love the trade that they made. Uh, I love the draft picks that they've made. And uh, they're really building. I think they're going to be a factor this year. Think of what's about to happen here at the Hall of Fame. Entering the Hall of Fame. What does this mean to you? Well, it means a lot. I, you know, actually, uh, I've been rejected like three or four times. I was nominated and I didn't make it. And I really didn't think that I was probably going to make it, uh, mainly because I'd never won a title as a coach. And you can't go in uh, as a combination player coach. It's either one or the other. So uh, uh, I probably thought I was dead. But I think I owe a uh, bit of gratitude to Jerry Sloan, who made it a couple of years ago without winning a title. So uh, that kind of opened the door for me, I think. But I really didn't feel that I would make it. Uh, I feel blessed that I did. Uh, I don't think I'm deserving, but yet so they put me in. So. Here I am, I like it or not. <laughs> well, when you entered the NBA as a player, and you did win championships with the Celtics, but when you think back on this time period, what was it that you hoped you'd get out of the game? Well, first of all, I love the game, and I've been blessed to be in something that I've loved for my entire life. Uh, except for the last two years, I've been in basketball for almost 50 years, and in the NBA for almost 50 years. Uh, so I've been blessed there. Uh, what I wanted to get out of it really was uh, just to do a good job and be a good coach. Uh, I think I've achieved that. Kind of take us back to when you even considered coaching as the second stage in your career. I mean, what, what was this exactly? Well, uh, I played for 14 years and then uh, retired. I was 36. I, you know, I didn't have another profession, so uh, I needed a job. I was raising four children at the time. And uh, so uh, I was looking around for something to do and I thought about maybe a natural would be uh, to be a referee. So I went out to the Summer League and I, I tried that for a while. I really liked that actually. I thought I would be a good referee, uh, but then an opportunity came along to coach the Milwaukee Bucks uh, and I grabbed it. Thinking about the coaches that influenced you, I mean, you played for the legendary Red Auerbach, but when you consider all of the coaches you played for, what the amalgam was of the coaching that helped make up the coach you were, what, what was this well, process? Who were these the number one guy was my first coach, Jack McMahon. Now, when I played for the Chicago Zephyrs, nobody knows that, that team, but they were in the NBA. Uh, he was my first coach. I loved him dearly, and we had a chance later in his life. Uh, he worked for me right here with, for the Golden State Warriors. Uh, so he was a big influence in my life, a uh, guy that taught me how to love the game and how to you know, be a, a factor uh, as a smart player. Uh, then, of course, Red Arbach was uh, I had an opportunity to play for him uh, only for one year, but my uh, 11 years in Boston, he was always a general manager, so he was always close to the scenes. And uh, I spent an awful lot of time with Red over the years, trying to understand the game and how to uh, not coach it at that point, but how to play it better. And uh, I had a, a, a good teacher in Red. I think those two guys were probably the, the, the biggest factors in my coaching career. You came here from Milwaukee after coaching the Bucks, and when you think back to those run TMC days, people here think of them so fondly. What do you kind of recollect as being the things that energized you the most about that era of basketball here? Well, when I got here, uh, the team had won just barely 20 games the year before, so they were we were a very poor team, and um, <clears throat> I decided that uh, if nothing else, why well, we would be exciting, and so I started out that way and. And built through uh, very few trades, but through the, uh, through the draft. I had one really good player, that was Chris Mullen at the time, and uh, drafted around Chris, uh, got Chris uh, to understand the importance of uh, citizenship and, uh, and to be a great leader and, and a great team player. Uh, and uh, he ba basically was my captain for all the years that I was here, along with uh, Mitch Richmond and Timmy Hardaway. And, you know, took those three guys, built some average guys around him and really had a pretty darn good team. You're thought of for that style of run and gun basketball, but in Milwaukee, you had teams that were really high up in the standings in defensive efficiency and really played some D. I mean, this was also a big part of 
the style you coach. Tell me about that time. Well, uh, a good coach will take uh, whatever team he has, evaluate it, and play to its potential, and try to get the best out of his team when he can win the most games and uh, go the farthest in the playoffs and maybe have a chance to win a title. And my teams in Milwaukee were bigger. Uh, they were the best teams that I coached through my career. And uh, unfortunately, there were two other better teams in the East. One was the Philadelphia 76ers with Moses Malone, Dr. J, and of course, everybody knows the Larry Bird teams and McHale and those teams. They were both in the league at the time. We actually beat both of those teams in the playoffs, but not in the same year, so we never made the finals.